One of the greatest tragedies of the Tudor period was the death of Henry VIII's son and heir, Edward VI. The young Tudor king had a horrific death inside of his palace, and he wasted away for months before his death then occurred. But Henry VIII quested greatly for a son, and he wanted a male heir more than anything, and it was his third wife, Jane Seymour, who gave him this. But shortly after giving birth to Edward VI in 1537, Jane died inside the walls of Hampton Court Palace. But Edward did survive. But the great hope for the Tudor period did not last too long, and he reigned for only a short number of years, and he was dominated by a Regency Council, meaning that Edward VI hardly had any impact on his nation. But what caused the death of Edward VI? Let's have a look at his post-mortem. Now, Edward was born on the 12th of October 1537, and the news of this male heir being born to King Henry VIII was met with huge amounts of celebration across England, and the nation had their greatly wanted male heir. There were many bonfires lit across England, and there was also a huge amount of celebration inside of churches. But Jane Seymour, the boy's mother, looked to recover well initially from the birth, despite a horrifically long labour. But she fell ill on the 23rd of October, and then died from what is believed to be postnatal complications. This tinged the happiness of the birth of Edward, and there was a lot of grief for the woman who gave the king his heir. Edward, though, was a healthy child, and he was not always sickly, but the king did love him greatly. He was known for being a tall and positive child, and as mentioned, he was not ill at all the time, and is often considered because he died of a young age. Edward did have poor eyesight, and he was known to wear glasses, and he also was partially deaf, but... At some point, however, he did contract quartan fever or malaria that looked dangerous for him, but he did manage to survive this. He was given the best education and was very intelligent, and he did get on well with his half-sisters Mary and Elizabeth, both of whom would later become queens. But Edward was also visited by other children to play. He was dedicated to his education, and he knew he was being prepared for kingship. On the 1st of July 1543, Henry VIII signed the Treaty of Greenwich, which attempted to bring Scotland and England together in peace, and this would have seen the betrothal of Edward to Mary, Queen of Scots, the seven-month-old Queen of Scotland. But the Scots did not consent to this, and they allied themselves with the French against the English, and Henry VIII ordered a brutal invasion, and he ordered that Edward Seymour, was to invade Scotland, attack Edinburgh, and then sack the nation and bring the people to heel. The War of the Rough Wooing was launched, and this was a brutal sign of Henry VIII's power. On the 10th of January, 1547, Edward wrote to his father to thank him for his New Year's gifts, but within a number of weeks, his father would die inside of his palace, and Edward was then made king. Henry VIII passed away inside the Palace of Whitehall, and Edward was just nine when he was crowned as the King of England at Westminster Abbey, and he was helped to rule by a Regency Council led by Edward Seymour, his uncle who became the Lord Protector of England, and who was practically ruling as a king in his own right. Edward's reign saw a huge amount of further religious change, as the nation became more Protestant, and Edward did little himself but his ministers and advisers took this responsibility on themselves. But by the end of Edward's reign, the church had been left destitute, and much of the wealth was absorbed into the royal coffers. But Edward, who was given the best care across England, was regularly monitored by the royal doctors and the best physicians across the nation, and they were concerned about what he ate and also his health. He was known to have been a well-fed and tall boy for his age, but also it was claimed that he had a right shoulder much lower than his left, and he may have had scoliosis of his spine, a curvature of his spine, 
as this could have been inherited through his maternal uncle, the Lord Protector Edward Seymour. However, in 1550, Edward VI then was forced to take bed rest as he was struck by a mysterious illness, and some of the doctors did not expect him to get better, and they thought he would die. But the news of this was kept quiet. However, the king did recover. In the spring of 1552, Edward VI got sick again, and he suffered from measles, which was very dangerous, and he later caught smallpox as well. He then met with an astrologer who documented his hearing and sight problems. But then things in December of 1552 took a turn for the worst. Edward VI showed signs of a very serious illness and disease, and it was possible that he had contracted tuberculosis earlier in the year. However, the infection of measles could have suppressed his immune system, and this allowed him to be further exposed to the infection. And on the 15th of February, 1553, it was known that the king was very sick with a fever and a cold, and his sister Mary visited him, and during this meeting, the king could not get out of bed, and he had a very serious cough. Some even believed that he could have been poisoned, but things got much worse. Edward VI's symptoms were very complex, and doctors tried to treat him, and even an unknown woman, or faith healer, claimed that she could cure the king. And when she gave him a potion, the king almost died from this, as his limbs began to swell heavily, showing that this woman probably gave him something that he was allergic to. But by the 17th of March, 1553, things were going further downhill, Edward VI was now very thin and gaunt, and he was bedridden, and the doctors considered moving him. He was moved to Greenwich Palace, and was taken down the River Thames to recover in the fresh air, and he did take walks inside of the palace gardens, but he was now coughing up blood, which was coming from his chest and his lungs. Some predicted still, though, that Edward VI would get better, and that he would make a full recovery but the doctors considered that he may have been suffering from a tumour or an abscess in his chest and lungs, which was getting irritated. Also, his stomach swelled and his body broke out in ulcers and sores, and on the 17th of May, he met with French ambassadors, and they noted that the king was very weak. His head also swelled, and he was given opiates to get him to sleep. But then Edward VI changed the succession to allow his first cousin, Lady Jane Grey, to take the throne after him, making sure that his Catholic half-sister Mary did not take the throne after him. And this would have ruined all of his work with the Reformation if she did. On the 10th of June, 1553, Edward VI was given just three days to live, and he could not keep any food down, and he also had a very bad fever. On the 15th of June, he had another intense fever, and this got worse, and he could not control his bowels, and his legs were so swollen that he could not be moved. Edward VI knew what was coming, and his hair also fell out, and his nails fell from his hands and feet. It was a very painful demise. On the 1st of July, 1553, he was seen by the public for the last time at a window, and he was known to have been very sick. But in his final moments, Sir Henry Sidney, a loyal courtier, was with him. He could not speak, and he prayed to God to deliver England away from Catholicism, and he wanted to die as a Protestant. On the 6th of July, at... Around eight in the evening in 1553, Edward VI died in the arms of Henry Sidney. His final words were, I am faint, Lord, have mercy upon me and take my spirit. A number of doctors also witnessed his death and following this, an autopsy did take place of the king's remains during the embalming process. His chest was cut open and the doctors peered inside and they found that the king had died from a lung condition or lung disease at a very young age. They found that his lungs had two ulcers upon them which had become very infected and they were in a very bad way. 
This leads to today a modern diagnosis that Edward VI died from tuberculosis, which is also known today as TB. At the time during the Tudor period, it was known as consumption, and many ambassadors writing at the time documented that the king had this condition and that he suffered from this. There was some debate that the king died from a pulmonary infection or from a lung abscess, which had also led to septicemia and that had become infected. It was clear, though, that the king had suffered with issues with his lung and the coughing up blood and other symptoms he experienced were key in diagnosing tuberculosis. Edward VI was buried on the 8th of August 1553 inside of Westminster Abbey. He was interred inside of a burial vault in an unmarked grave, and this was later marked with a gravestone and memorial. But the reign of Edward VI was a very short one, and following a brief period of nine days on the throne by his successor Lady Jane Grey, the reign of Bloody Mary I would begin in England. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.